Hi everyone, today we will build on last week's tutorial a code, the backpropagation algorithm from scratch in Python. If you want to get a, a refresher on the theory, to uh, go take a look at my previous video and um, let's jump right into the code. So here we are in this notebook, um, we don't only have the backpropagation algorithm, we have uh, the multi-layer perceptron, um, which we, we need some kind of network to do the backpropagation. Uh, so it's uh, it's it's breaking down to like two parts. We have the neuron, and then we have the multi-layer perceptron class. Um, however, um, it's not very flexible. The, the goal was just to showcase uh, the backpropagation, how to code it. So here we're going to use a two-layer perceptron, uh, just for demo purposes, and we're going to uh, try to learn the XOR function, and we're going to use the delta technique uh, for the backpropagation implementation. So uh, in the description, I've linked a, a very good tutorial uh, for the, um, the derivation of what we're going to be using. Uh, so take a look at this. So let's start. We're going to start from the bottom. So here we are. So uh, we're going to do the XOR function. So it's just like four inputs and then those are all Y. So it's one or the other, but not both. Um, so zero, one, one, zero work. And uh, we're going to use um, two layer, one hidden and one output. So the output will only have one uh, neuron and then the hidden layer can have a varying number of neuron. We're gonna start with uh, with three, this. And this is the number of iteration. So let's, let's test the full thing. Here we're creating a classifier like we were, we'll be in a scikit-learn and then we're fitting it and then we're checking if the error is going down. Uh, yeah, so run this. Okay. So uh, with that much um, iteration, we still have like half. Um, we have a random classifier. So if we increase it, we still have this. Increase it again. It's going down, right? It's going down and then we get no error at some point. So after this much iteration, we have a um, low amount of error. Um, however, if we increase the number of neuron here, so we make a bit, w make it a bit wider. Uh, it's a bit more dynamic, and I think we we get there faster. Um, or the training is a bit slower. Usually, what you want to do is have like a, a deeper neuron, a deeper network than a, a wider one. Um, but for for demo purposes, we can see that uh, it's it's. Um, keep it at 10. It's working fine. So this is what we're doing. We're creating this class. We give the number of neuron that we want in the hidden layer and number iteration we want. And then we try, we just, we just create this classifier and then we fit it with our data. And this is where the backpropagation is. So let's look at the multi-layer perceptron uh, class. It's right there. It's a bit verbose, but, um, so there are some optimization to do, but here it's more about documentation than, um, optimization. So uh, if you want to take a look at this, uh, it's on my GitHub, which is linked in the description. So here, this is a constructor. So we have those parameters, the learning rate, I'm not changing it in, in the testing, but we, you can just set it if you want to. Here, I'm constructing my uh, layers and here I'm just setting some parameters. Um, but here I'm constructing them uh, out, outside in. So I start with the output uh, layer over here. Uh, this is the neuron class that we're going to see afterward. This is where much of the computation is done. And here I'm saying it's an output uh, neuron uh, because that will change how we're doing the backpropagation. And here I'm creating the hidden layer. And if you look here, I'm attaching um, this neuron to the other um, layer that was there previously. Uh, if we want to have multiple layer, this will be a bit uh, difficult to do. Um, but this was not the purpose for this. Uh, particular video and here I'm attaching this neuron over here because we need some kind of uh, uh, relationship between the two layers and uh, over here I'm just like saving this neuron over here that's it for the 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 constructor if we look at uh, we're gonna look at the predict first because it's an easier one what we're doing over here is we're gathering all the activation um, so it's the forward pass. I have a video on this if you want to have uh, a bit more uh, information about the theory. 
but the idea is that um, here I add the bias um, uh, the bias value and then I just uh, go through each of my my neuron and I, I do the activation and I just uh, get all of these activation those will be my feature for my output neuron and here I'm just adding a bias again and I put that into my output neuron and I use predict for the output neuron over here right so all the neurons here all the perceptron the neurons are using predict on some data here at the row with it and then uh, after I, I, I go through this activation and then this activation go through this uh, other neuron activation I look at if the activation is greater or equal to 0.5 if it is it's a 1 otherwise it's a 0 but that's pretty much it for the predict and then the fit this is where much 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 uh, most of the meat is um, here I'm not using NumPy, I'm just using some bunch of lists, so it's not that optimized, but it doesn't really matter. So here what I'm doing, I'm editing the weight on each of the neuron in uh, my perceptron, including the output neuron, right? Um, and I, we need to do that so that uh, here, it like uh, what I, how I've done it is, you first create your architecture, and then uh, you create the connection when you're ready for the fitting. So this is what we're doing here. So we're creating the connection uh, over there, All right? So this is all creating the connections. Um, here, this is where we're actually training stuff, and that's it. So um, if we look, we're gonna do this this training regimen uh, number of iteration time. So in this case, it's uh, a lot of times. Um, so that's what we're going to do. And we're going to use stochastic gradient descent. So at every time, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take a random integer, right, um, from zero to number of row, and then we're going to select a row. We select that row. We predict uh, what this will do, right? So for giving that row what is our prediction, and then uh, we're going to compare this to the target. So this is stochastic gradient descent, where in uh, the 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 gradient descent algorithm is not implemented over there, but this is how I select um, the row for my, my stuff. Uh, the stochastic gradient descent will be used over there in the calculate update. Um, so perfect, that's it. So here we calculate uh, how we should update all layers. So we start from um, outside in. So we start with the output layer. So just one neuron here. We calculate the update given the learning rate and the target. So Stochastic gradient descent will happen here, and then we do the same thing for um, the hidden uh, neuron layer. We have to, to do them in this order because um, these guys are uh, looking at the delta of these guys, and this guy doesn't need the delta of anything because it's at the, at the end. Um, but this is the order we need to do it. And once once we calculate the new weights for all of the layers. This is where we update all of the layers. So it's like a two-step process. First, you calculate what you what the new weight should be, and then you update them. If you don't do that, um, we'll just don't. It will, it will be messed up. And this is just to print um, at the rotation. So here, the problem is um, with the implementation is that we're using the same um, data for training and um, uh, validation. However, here it doesn't matter because the problem is fully deterministic. The XOR function is just, there. there's no, you cannot just get more data. Um, you, we, we've saw, we've seen all of the problem, right? So there's there's only four possible state. And here we're just trying to f overfit. Well, it, it's not even overfitting. We're just trying to fit this uh, neural network to that particular function. So we're creating a black box that will do this function. That's it. So uh, the two things that we need to keep in mind is calculate update and update. That's pretty much it. So this is what we need to check in the, the neuron class. So this one is the most verbose, right? Um, and th this is where I decided to put much of the computation, but we don't necessarily have to do that. We can do it a different way. But here I think um, I, I find it cleaner to do it this way. So this is a constructor, so we need to say what the position of the layer is when we create it and if it's an output neuron. Here we need to do that um, for uh, getting the right weights in the next 
uh, layer. So in the hidden layer, when we get to the, the output layer, um, so here this is just for um, for uh, some variable used to to make it work, right? Here this is for the back propagation. So we need the updated weight, so the temporary weight until we we actually update. Um, so here we just get if this is not put around or not, that will change the back propagation. Here the delta we need it to store it. Um, and here the position layer also we need to store it. So this is needed because uh, if the output, let's say the output layer is updated, right? We, we, we have the updated weight over here. Um, the hidden layer will need that delta. Good. So here this function is attached to output. It's just to attach this neuron to another uh, neuron. I said attached to output because we only have two layer and it's only the hidden layer that will uh, actually do this. This is just a sigmoid, so this is the activation function we're using. If we're not using this one, um, then well, my thing is a bit hard coded to work with the sigmoid. So I, I have the derivative of the sigmoid bred down there. Um, but if you want to have any kind of activation, we're gonna have to look more about uh, something called a computational graph and uh, automatic differentiation, but this is not what we're doing here. This is when we init the weights, so we just init them randomly, right? Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for that. And over here, this is the predict, right? So it's basically the same thing as before. And what we're doing here is we're just um, summing stuff and we're doing activation plus the weight times the feature. That's, that's all we're doing here. Here, if you see, I'm um, saving the inputs as we need them um, for the back propagation. So we predict, this is the forward pass, and we return the output, and this is where we actually update. Um, wait, this is not where we update. Wait, here. This is where we calculate the update. So remember, we calculate the update and then we update. So the back propagation um, stuff is mostly here, right? And the back propagation, how it works is that there's, th there's this thing called the delta, right? and it's uh, used to calculate the gradient. So once you have the delta, you do this times the current input and you give you the gradient. So where, how much you should move. And this is where you can actually use gradient descent, right? And it's stochastic gradient descent because of how we sample the, the row uh, in the data set. And here, this is where we, we add the new weight. So if we focus over here first before going up, up there, at this point, we have the delta, right? We, depending if we're output neuron or not, we have the delta. And then this is where we create the updated weights. And over here, we just iterate in the weights and the inputs, and uh, we um, calculate the gradient, do a gradient descent to get the new weight, and then uh, add this to the updated weights. And this will be stored until we're ready to update. So if we look at the update, what it does, we just replace. We replace the weights by the updated weights. That's it, right? So um, the only thing we need to uh, care really is the delta and the delta is given by this function for the output so that's that's all we we have to know about self that output um, so the output minus the target times the output times one minus the output and this is because of the uh, derivative of the sigmoid that we have but if we are in the um, the hidden layer it's uh, something different uh, we have to uh, we're going to do something a bit similar, but we have to have a delta sum, uh, which will be the sum of um, the delta uh, of the other uh, layer that I'm outputting to times their weight. So if we look over here, we ca we're going to uh, have this accumulator, right? And then we get the position that this current neuron should be in, and uh, this will help us get the, the correct weight uh, in the next uh, layer afterwards, so here the output layer. So here in self that output neurons, uh, we're gonna iterate. Here we just have one output neuron, but um, if we had more, that would still work. And what we do is delta sum equal delta sum plus, and this is what matters: the output neuron delta times the output neuron weight at this index for this particular um, neuron. So by doing this, we're gonna get the correct weight. We're gonna multiply by the this neuron delta and then we're going to be able to sum them 
and that's it afterward we get the delta by doing the delta sum times this thing and again it's with the derivative uh, with the derivation of um, back propagation algorithm that we saw in the previous video so I will encourage you to to look into this um, as I want to demystify it's uh, it's pretty a simple algorithm and like I said here is where we were doing the stuff um, to calculate the, out the uh, updated weights and that's pretty much it there's there's not much to it after that um, and if we look back here uh, thing is still working right here we get a bit worse at some point but um, we get down to zero so it means that uh, this is actually um, it learned um, the right thing so if I do CLF that fit uh, that predict and I give it um, say 0 1 should see a 1 if I give it 0 0 should see a 0 and then right so far so good that's it so we coded the XOR function that's it I hope you enjoyed this video um, if you have any comments uh, feedback it's welcome you can put it in the in the in the comment section and um, yeah have a good week